Good morning. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to do my best on this one. Um, I'm already a little emotional just trying to proofread it, so uh, bear with me. Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody to church this morning, uh, all the visitors, members alike. I'm glad to see everybody out this morning and, and, and proud to have you here. Uh, I just want to take a minute and uh, tell you a little bit about my life, my journey, uh, how I got here, and um, what Sunday school at New Home means to me. Um, so for those of you who don't know me, uh, I'm Landon, and I'm a deacon. I worship here at New Home, and <laughs> um, I serve the church and the Lord. And uh, hang on a second. Let me get. Let me get. <clears throat> All right. So let me get started here. So <clears throat> I uh, I attended church regularly growing up with my family. I went to uh, Yates Thagard in uh, Whistler Pines, and uh, Pastor Johnson um, was a was a great leader. And uh, but I specifically want to mention uh, Sammy Fry, the youth pastor, who uh, sat down with me one morning, you know, after church service and uh, told me exactly what it means to be saved and he, he kneeled down with me to say the prayer and uh, I, I tell you, I, I can't remember how old I was or exactly what, what day or what year, but uh, I can tell you I will never forget the prayer, the words, the feeling, the scenery. It, it's just something powerful that moves you. It's a, it's a feeling that you, you won't forget. Uh, even uh, even if there are some things about it that don't hit you right away. And uh, um, I, uh, I spent several years uh, after saying the prayer, being baptized, uh, still going to church regularly on, at the uh, 11 a.m. worship like everyone else, just trying to be there, do the right thing, uh, but still stumbling over what it means to be a Christian, you know, how to, how to live, you know, my walk with Christ hadn't fully developed. I was still working on it, and I, I spent years like that until I met my wife, who it may not uh, get said enough has done a lot for me. And uh, so, my wife is is the reason that I'm here at New Home, and. And uh, her, her and her family were worshiping here, um, and uh, I uh, met her, and I, I joined them, and I got started, and I met all these great people. And let, and let me just say that uh, New Home is, is not just a, a new home. I mean, the name says it all, but it, it's a new family. And, and everything that the people of this church have done for me, uh, it, it's been a beautiful thing. It's been a blessing. And so I started uh, attending here with my wife, and it, uh, <clears throat> it wasn't truly until I started to attend Sunday school that the real blessings start to come out. It's when, it's when you surround yourself with fellow Christians, and you can talk about the struggles of life, the, uh, the questions of life and faith, and, and just... These Sunday school teachers just bring it out. I mean, it, it gets delivered in a way that you just you can't understand. I mean, Pastor Trey does a fantastic job during the 11 a.m. service, and but it's just Sunday school is a powerful thing. We we talk about scripture, we do devotions, we we have activities. We, I mean, we play videos. You name it. It's a, it's a beautiful thing, and uh, I just want to make sure everybody's aware that if you're not coming, you're missing a blessing. And and you really need to try it. I, I say you won't, you will not regret it if you try it, and uh, it may change your life. But um, Sunday school for me uh, has been priceless. Uh, becoming a better servant for the Lord is what it's all about. Uh, strengthening your walk with Christ, um, you know, saying the prayer gets you there, gets Jesus in your heart. That's, that's where it all begins. That's where you start to move. You get the Holy Spirit. But when you really strengthen your walk with Christ and surround yourself with Christians and you, and you, and you live the way that God wants you to live, the way that Jesus lived, uh, a sinless life, it, it, it can do 
above and beyond anything you can imagine. And I just want to I just want to thank everybody that puts forth the effort here at New Home, you know, the, the instructors, the people that uh, bring everybody together and make this happen, you know, it, 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 there's no words, you know, nose in Bible, it's uh, inspiration and encouragement is what we talked about this morning, and that's all I needed to get up here. Uh, you know, I was struggling with it, you may not have been able to see it, but I was, and, and I'm, you know, I'm glad to be here, and I'm glad to be around all of you. And I thank you for your time. I'm glad you took that water away. <sighs> Water's not good unless it's getting ready to go through some grounds. <laughs> Well, good morning. Ooh, cut it down a little, KJ. Oh, wait, let me put it on right. There we go. My bad. I need one of those um, telemarketer things. Goes around my ear, sticks down here. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. It's good to be in the heated house of the Lord, amen? amen? Oh, man, it's cold out there. Thank you for choosing to worship with us today. It is an honor and a privilege to stand before you and to attempt to bring the Word of God to a people who are truly seeking God in their lives. Today, I would invite you to join with me as we look at the Gospel of John. Today our scripture is going to come from the 14th chapter of the Gospel of John. John chapter 14, I will be beginning in verse 5. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Would you pray with me? Father God, thank you for today. Lord, there is a cold wind outside, but there is a warm heart in here. Thank you, dear Lord, for giving us these Christian brothers and sisters who are here today, dear Lord, to learn more about you and to help each other become what you would have us become. I pray today, dear God, that you would reveal yourself unto us, not by my words or by my actions, Lord, but by your message delivered from this pulpit. I pray, dear Lord, that you would speak to each and every one of us. To those out there, dear Lord, who are searching, I pray that you would reveal unto them how great and how loving you are. Lord, for those out there who know you, I pray that you would continue to reveal yourself unto them so that they may know how to live and that they may know what to do. I pray now, dear Lord, that you would come, continue to bless us, continue to be a part of this service. Speak to us, dear God, and when we hear, may we listen. In your Son's name I pray, amen. I got some good news for y'all today. Y'all excited about good news? I have great news today. You know what that news is? Butter is good for you. No, I'm serious. How many of you out there have heard that lie that butter is bad for you? You can look this up if you don't believe me. No less an organization than CBS said this. There's a new study out that says butter and other fats are not as bad for you as they once thought they were. You know what this means? No, you can't go out and have a stick of butter for lunch. That's just bad cook a grilled cheese with a stick of butter, that's different. 
Do you know what this study said? It said that these scientists said butter and fat was bad. And you know what this study told people to eat instead of, instead of fats and butters? It said to go out and eat carbohydrates. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but some of us in America have a weight problem, don't we? You know what they say in this study this weight problem comes from? Eating carbohydrates. The very advice that these doctors and these nutritionists gave us to keep us healthy and to keep us well is now working against us. Now, I know donuts are mostly made out of carbs, right? Carbs and sugar and little pieces of goodness. But these nutritionists who are trying to keep us so healthy and trying to tell us to avoid these bad things, if they hadn't have said it, we might be healthier today. They have been misproven. They have been proven to be wrong. But it doesn't stop there. How many of you heard about the Big Bang? I'm not talking about the TV show, although that is pretty cool. The Big Bang is what scientists are always exclaiming. Everything started at the Big Bang. All of creation started at the Big Bang. Everything that's ever come into being happened at that Big Bang. Well, guess what? Sci.org, which is a physicist's website, has published a paper this week. And I bet you didn't hear about it. Because, number one, y'all aren't nerds. Well, maybe Landon, but... Sci.org published a paper, and these two renowned physicists, you know what they've said? The Big Bang didn't happen. Physicists are now saying the Big Bang didn't happen. The universe has just been there. How many times have scientists thrown into our face, oh, we're smarter than you religious people, we have all the answers. Well, guess what? They just came out this week and said they were wrong. So nutritionists are wrong. Scientists are wrong. What about politicians? <laughs> I heard a lot of things. We were supposed to get free stuff, weren't we? It was supposed to be free. If we liked it, we could keep it. How's that working out? Can we believe anybody anymore? It seems like every time somebody comes out and says something is true, something is solid, something is irrefutable, guess what happens in about 10 years? They come out and say, oh, we were wrong. Global warming. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry. Global warming became climate change. Um, just a little aside, two, three years ago, they were going to have a rally to raise people's awareness of global warming. They were going to have thousands of people marching to promote global warming in Washington, D.C. And you know what happened? They had to cancel it because it was too cold. <laughs> Ain't no global warming going on outside today. There are many people out there in the world today who are competing for you. They are competing for your trust. They are competing for your interest. They are out there trying to get you to follow them. Unfortunately, there are many people out there who have a hole in their life. They are not a complete person. And they seek to try to fill this hole with many different things. All too often, people try to define themselves by the job that they do. I know that I have said it before, but there are many people out there who do not have any time for anything except their job. Do you know people like this? They don't have free time. They don't have family time. They have job time. And I never understand, well, let me take that back. I know what it's like to be at your job 24-7. But I never understood how people could take a secular job and make it so important that they turn their back on everything else. But we know people who are so wrapped up in the idea of getting power. They're so wrapped up in the idea of doing what they do that they turn their back to everything except their job. But it doesn't stop there. For you see, there's also people out there who are obsessed with sports too. How many people 
elevate sports to a spot in their life that supersedes everything else. How many people do you know skip out on family functions, skip out on vacations, skip out on church itself because they've got to go play a sport? I don't care how far you can hit a ball. I don't care what your percentage is. Is that going to get you into heaven? But people pursue sports like it will. There is nothing wrong with being a great athlete. Some of you... Okay, all of you are better athletes than I am. And if God has given you the ability to play a sport, by all means, pursue that. But do not become so wrapped up in it that you forget who you are and what your purpose is. There are people out there, maybe they're not athletic, maybe they're not caught up with, caught up with their job, but they are caught up with all of their volunteer work. How many people out there spend every waking moment with some cause or another trying to make the world a better place? Do you know people like that? You call them up and say, hey, can we do lunch? Oh no, I've got a Save the Iguanas Foundation meeting at 3 o'clock. People try to fill their lives and try to make themselves feel better by volunteering. Volunteering is good, but if it, if it becomes the sole purpose in your life, you are missing out. I cannot continue with this list without mentioning the most obvious of all, though. I'm just going to call this category bad things. There are too many of our friends and family who define themselves with bad and evil influences of this world. Maybe they find their purpose in a bottle. Maybe they find it in a pill. Maybe they find it in a needle. But they are defined not by who they are, but by their addiction. They cease becoming the people that we love and care about and exist only for that bad thing that has so much influence in their lives. All of these things, when we pursue them, when we pursue them to the extent that we forget everything else, how does that make us wind up? Do we ever find full satisfaction and glory in our jobs? Do we ever find full and eternal salvation in the sports that we play? Do we ever find true fulfillment in the volunteering that we do? And do we ever find hope in the addictions that haunt us? These people these people who pursue these things. They have fallen to the great lie that Satan has put forth. Satan has told them, I know that you have a hole in your soul. I know that you have a hurt. And if you work at this thing, it will fulfill you and you will make whole and you will feel better. And the world goes along with this, doesn't it? The world encourages people to take up these things and find themselves in them. Look at our society today. We glorify people who are good at their job. We glorify people who are good at sports. We glorify people who do great things, but maybe they do a few bad things too and we tend to overlook them, don't we? How many pro athletes have a record? How many of our politicians have a record? How many of our bosses do things that we know are wrong, but we overlook them because of who they are? There are many people, there are many things in this world today who are trying to make you believe that they are true and they are good and you can find fulfillment in them. But all of these things of the world no matter how good they sound, no matter how great they look, guess what? They're wrong, aren't they? All of the promises that the world makes, all of the promises that people make, all of the promises that the devil makes, given time, what's going to happen to those promises? They will pass away. They will be proven wrong. Why? Why do we look to people? Why do we look to things of this world and treat them as prophets? 
We think when someone says something that it is gospel truth, that is, it is unbreakable. We look at these people and say, you said that and I believe it and nothing's going to change my mind. Folks, the Bible tells us clearly in Jeremiah 28 and Ezekiel 33, a true prophet will be proven right. If it is true and it is of God, it is going to be right and it is never, ever going to be wrong. How many times has the world been right? I won't ask you about politicians, I know that. So pastor, if everything in this world is not true, what is true? I'm going to tell you what's true. God is true. God and God alone is true. How do I know that? Because He tells me that. Well, pastor, that's circular logic. You're using God to support God. All right. How about this? God has proven to me that He is real because of what He has done in my life. I may get up here and I may tell you that it's 32 degrees outside and somebody will go out there and tell me I'm wrong. It's colder than that. Somebody, I may stand up here and tell you that it's 1130 and somebody will say, Pastor, you're wrong. It's 1142. But if I stand here today and tell you that I believe in God, there is nothing that you can say that will prove me wrong. Because I have experienced God. And I am willing to say many, many of you have as well. Amen? God is real because He has proven Himself to me. And He has proven Himself to me in a way that all of the world combined can never disprove. All that God has promised me has come to pass. How long have we been reading Revelations? Almost a year now. Revelations was written almost 2,000 years ago. But guess what? That stuff's coming true, isn't it? You look at the Old Testament. The Old Testament was written even further back than Revelation. We're talking thousands of years ago. And the things that were predicted in the Old Testament, what's happening? They're coming true. Things that were spoken, things that were written thousands of years before us have been proven true because God told us it would happen. I am here today, dear friends, to tell you, if you are trying to fill your life with truth, if you think this world can give you truth, if you think people can give you truth, you're going to be mistaken. There is only one truth that will last. There, was on, there is only one truth that is really, truly real. If you are out there searching for truth, there is no truth greater than my God. God is not defined by truth. Truth is defined by God. I want you to hear that. God is not defined by truth. Truth is defined by God. No one, no thing, no thought, nothing has ever been as faithful as God is to us. There is no thing on this earth that can be as true as He is. He is the standard by which all is measured. Now, don't get me wrong. Things can change. Anybody in here read ancient Greek? I used to. The way we read this Word of God may change, but He doesn't ever change Himself. Hebrews 13.8 tells us, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. He does not change because He is perfect. There are so many of you out there who are cast adrift in life. You are floating out there and you are seeking something to grab hold of. You are seeking something that you can grab hold of and use it to define yourself. 
And I am here today to tell you, God is the pillar that you must grab hold to. If you grab hold of anything except Him, you are going to be mistaken, you're going to be misled, and you are going to perish. God is the truth that you seek, whether you realize it or not. Seek Him. Not people. Not power. Not the things that are bad of this world. Seek Him. Because in this truth you will find what you are seeking is in Him. There is forgiveness in God. Does the world ever forgive us? The world has a really bad habit of throwing our past mistakes in our face, doesn't it? Like somebody said, you may think it didn't happen, but it's on YouTube, isn't it? Some questionable dance moves on YouTube. It does not matter what you have done. It does not matter how bad you have been. It does not matter what you did, who you hurt. If you come to God with a sincere heart, He is going to forgive you. And when God forgives you, He does not throw it back in your face. Forgiveness, true forgiveness can come only from God. If you are out there today and you are hurting because of what you did, there is hope for forgiveness in Him. The world will say that it will give you another chance, but it's just looking for an opportunity to put you down again. God will forgive you and He will pick you up and put you where you need to be. Not only is there forgiveness for what you have done, there is hope in God as well. No matter what your situation is, you may look at yourself and think there is no one, there is nothing that's going to get me out of this depth. There is nothing that can help me. Well, friend, I don't care how bad you are. I don't care how bad off you are. God can do it. God can pull you out of any slump that you're in. God can take any problem that you have, and He has an amazing way of turning problems into grace, doesn't He? There is forgiveness in God. There is hope in God. And there is purpose in God as well. No matter what you use of this world to try to find fulfillment in yourself, you will come up short. If you take things of this world and try to define yourself by them, you will never be what you are meant to be. It is only in God that we can become complete. It is only by surrendering ourselves that God can enable us to be what we've truly meant to be. God gives you more strength than all of this world has combined. God can take you no matter where you are. And if you trust in Him, you can find purpose. Not a moment's purpose. Not a fleeting purpose. But an eternal purpose. There is forgiveness, there is hope, there is purpose, and finally, dear friends, there is promise in God as well. This world will tell you that if you serve the world, great things will happen. Yeah, they will. Great things will happen for the world, but you'll be left out on your own. God's promise to you is simple. If you trust in me, I will take care of you. No, that does not mean that you will have a mansion here on earth. No, it does not mean you'll have all the cars and things that you want on earth. But it does mean that you'll have more than you could ever imagine when you get to heaven. The promise that God makes is that He will be there and He will love us and He will never forsake us. Never ever, ever forsake us. It's good to be loved by God. This promise that God makes, 
Not only will He be there for us, He will take care of us. How many times do we wander through life wondering what we are supposed to do? How many times do we face a crisis and feel like we are not strong enough to go on? God's promise to us is simple. If you trust me, I will take care of you. I will help you through these trying times. I will give you the guidance that you seek. So what, Pastor? What's the point in all this? If you don't hear, if you don't remember anything else I say today, hear and remember this. Believe me when I say this. What you seek is here today. What you long for is right before you. A truth that can never be taken away. A truth that will never be refuted right here at this altar. Right here and now is something that you can believe in and something that will be there for all of eternity. God awaits you here at this altar today. If you have lived your life and tried to live to things of this world or tried to fill the hole in your heart with things of the devil, now is the day to come forward and find out what it's truly about. This truth that I speak of is here and it is free to all who would take. My God loves you and desires a relationship with you. Stop looking to the world for things that the world cannot give you. Come down here today. Talk with me. Come down here and pray. God wants to know you. God wants to love you more than anything in this world. But you must put your faith in Him. You must say to Him, I believe you. I know what you say is true. If you do that, if you come down and profess that, you will be given something that no one, no thing, not even the devil can ever take away from you. You will receive the grace of God. So today, as Reed comes and leads us, my question to you is simple. Why? Why do you believe in things of this world? Why do you think that this world is going to be at looking out for your best interest? Why do you choose this world above God? My God loves you, and my God is the very definition of truth. Come now. Come today. Take part of this great truth. Trust your life to someone who is going to be looking out for you. For now, for tomorrow, forever and ever. Amen. Come, God is here. What holds you back? Take a hymn book and turn to page 308. Pass me not, O gentle Savior, Hear my humble cry While on others thou art calling Do not pass me by Savior, Savior Hear my humble cry While on others thou art calling Do not pass me let me at thy throne of mercy find a sweet relief. Kneeling there in deep contrition, how my Thy face, heal my 
my wounded, broken spirit. Save me by thy grace. Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Thou the spring of all my comfort, more than life to me. Whom have I on earth beside thee? Whom in heaven but thee? Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry While on others thou art calling Do not pass me by Savior, Savior Hear my humble cry While on others thou art calling Do Pass me by, let me at the throne of mercy find a sweet relief, kneeling there in deep contrition, help my unbelief. Say. Thou art calling, do not pass me by. Trusting only in thy merit, would I see thy face? Heal my wounded, broken spirit, save me by thy grace. Savior, save. My humble cry, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Thou the spring of all my comfort, more than life to me. Whom have I on earth beside thee? Whom in heaven but thee? Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. I've wandered far away from God. Now I'm coming home. The of sin too long I've tried Lord I'm coming home coming home coming home never more to roam open wide thine arms of love Lord I'm coming home I've wasted many precious years now I'm coming home, I now repent with bitter tears, Lord I'm coming home, coming home, coming home, never more to roam, open wide thine arms of love, Lord I'm coming home. Seat for a minute. It is my honor and privilege today to stand here with Kinley. Kinley has come forward and said that she wants to live for God. 
She wants to serve God with all that she is and that she is going to spend her life looking to Him for guidance. Looking to Him on how to live. Kenley, we're proud of you. Kenley comes forward today making this profession and seeking to become a member of New Home Baptist Church. What is the pleasure of the church dealing with our young sister here? All these people out here, they're going to be praying for you. They're going to be praying for you, and you're going to pray for them. Because what you've done today, not only have you given yourself to God, we've made a commitment as well. Because we look out for each other. Amen? I'm going to ask Henley and Mom to stay up here. As we close, I'm going to invite you to come forward. Shake her hand, hug her neck, let her know that you're going to be praying for her. You do that for me? Let's bow our heads for a prayer. Father God, thank you. Thank you for grace that is greater than me. Thank you for strength, dear Lord. Thank you for knowing what I need to do. Please, dear God, please be with us all this week. Help us, dear Lord, to live the way You would have us live. Help us to bring honor and glory not to ourselves, but to You. Lead us, guide us, keep us warm. In Your Son's name we pray. Amen.